Hello everyone and welcome to another Janome Live. I am Alba and you are joining me in the Janome Sewing Studio here in New Jersey. Today we're going to be talking about the ruffler. This is one of the optional accessories. This does not come with any one of our machines, but it's often one that I recommend and is one that when you look at it, people look at it and just shake their heads and go, it looks like a medieval, medieval torture device. And it does look a little scary, but I'm really going to take all the intimidation out of it and show you some fun things you can do with it. The first thing I'm going to do is explain the bits and pieces of the ruffler foot. This is the Janome Ultimate Ruffler. Now you want to be cautious about which ruffler you get. There are several varieties available. And the reason several are available is because this is a snap-on foot. And if you look at the bar that I'm pointing at, the reason we stress getting the right one is that bar is a different size this foot over here happens to be for a seven millimeter stitch width. And you'll notice that the distance from the edge to the edge where the foot snaps on is different than this particular one that is for a nine millimeter. So this is why we often stress that maximum stitch width that your machine has. It's very important when you're choosing a snap-on foot like the Ultimate Ruffler. So the engraving on this is the RF foot, the Ruffler, the Ultimate Ruffler foot. Now I'm going to explain some of the anatomy of the foot so that it makes it a little bit easier to use because it does have a lot of moving parts and it does look a little scary. The first thing that I am going to show is the ratchet gear, which is this part up top. And you'll notice that it has a star, a 12, a 6, and a 1. And this is adjustable. So I can move that to the different positions. I will be honest with you, I recommend staying at six. And what these numbers mean is every six stitches that the machine takes, it will take a pleat and fold that fabric. Six is the one setting that you could really get the most control with and that you're able to make many adjustments with. And once this is on the machine, you'll see that better. There's a moving arm. And one part that I want to show you is this black screw. Now, if this foot is on your machine, here's where your machine is, where that white pointer is. And this will be facing you. This is the depth of the fabric that will be taken. And on the side, I know it's going to be really difficult to see because these are small numbers, but there are engraved numbers that go to the number eight. When this screw is all the way tight towards the back of the machine, this is the largest amount of fabric that will go into the ruffler and cause the greatest depth in a plate, pleat. Now it is called the ultimate ruffler, but it does create pleats. When I loosen this to a lesser number on the side, I will have less depth of fabric. So this is one way that you can adjust the look of your pleats or your gather. Now with this arm, you will notice that there is a blade right in the front and I'm going to turn that a little bit and it almost looks like a snake's tongue. And this moves back and forth and as the machine stitches and it moves this part forward, it causes the fabric to pleat 
or cause that gather. Anything that is underneath this plate is what will be gathered. Meaning if I place fabric completely underneath the foot and not underneath that blade, it will remain flat. So I can put this on the machine and leave one piece of fabric flat, pleat that top layer and have it pleated and attached to fabric all in one step, making this really versatile. Just think of how easy those skirts, curtains, all kinds of projects will be when you're able to gather and attach to a flat piece of fabric in one step. Now this piece here is called the fork arm and I'm putting my, my stylist right in here. This piece will need to go around your needle screw so that as your needle is moving up and down, it will cause the action of that plate to move forward and cause that pleat. Now, how do I get seam allowances? And I'm gonna flip this upside down so that you can see that. You're gonna notice that there are some accordion pleats right here. I'm pointing at them. When your fabric is placed in that area, you will achieve about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. When my fabric is all the way over to that rounded curve, it will give you about a one inch seam allowance. I'm gonna turn that over. Now it'll be a little bit easier to see. Here is that pleated area where you're gonna feed your fabric in and out and that will cause your quarter of an inch, as well as by that curved area that will give you a one inch seam allowance. Now we're gonna go to the machine and I have the Ultimate Ruffler attached to my Continental M7. There are two areas of the foot that I do wanna make you aware of. One is that needle drop hole. You'll see that opening, and this is where your needle is going to fall into. And when this foot is on the machine, it's really important to make sure that your needle is dropping directly in the center of that opening. I'm going to place my finger there and then let that go so you see where that went from white to color. And I'll do that one more time. We're looking right over here, right in that center. So that's really important to take a look at while on your machine. If you have an electronic or computerized machine where you have needle position movements, you are going to be much better off adjusting your needle position to make sure that your needle is catching right in that center. For those of you who might have a mechanical model machine and you don't have as many needle adjustment positions, there is a screw on the back that will adjust where you're snapping onto the machine to make sure that you're falling right into the correct spot. Now, for those of you with that electronic machine, I line that up and center it. I tighten this screw. I tighten it as tight as I could get with a screwdriver. And on mine personally, I've even given this a touch of crazy glue to make sure that that does not loosen. For a mechanical machine, you will need to make adjustments, but remember to use your screwdriver to tighten up this foot. Now, in addition to the foot being tight, you also want to tighten that needle screw and the screw where the foot is attaching to your machine. 
Now, I am going to remove this. What you want to do is that fork arm, it looks like a letter U that's black. This needs to go around the screw that holds your needle in place. And I'm gonna lower that foot. I'm gonna make sure it is snapped on. As that needle goes up and down, that is what's going to cause the action in my ruffler. So this is another reason why you want to make sure that that needle screw is really very tight because with that vibration, it may loosen on you. Now I'm going to be placing my fabric and there is that grooved area and it is sometimes helpful to move that tongue forward. And when I am within those grooves, it will give me about a quarter of an inch. Now, before I use my machine, I want to go to a relatively slow speed, and I am going to lower that hand wheel to make sure that my needle is dropping right in the center and I am not hitting any metal. I want to, by turning my hand wheel, take quite a few stitches and form two pleats so that I know I am not hitting into anything. And there I form two pleats with my hand wheel, nice and slow. And only then do I start sewing with my foot pedal or my start stop button. And now, now this is set up that every six stitches, it is going to take a pleat. But I have lessened the amount of my pleating action. So I want to make this as much depth as possible. So I am tightening that screw. Because you'll notice that as this was pleating, it was barely catching any fabric. So now as that tongue moves forward, it's grabbing a lot more fabric. And I just want to let the machine do the work. Now I told you that there were some adjustments that I could make with this. And I'm going to show you. This is every six stitches. And this is a stitch length of 2.4. Not that easy, writing on fabric. So this is 2.4, and look at how that gather is. Now I'm going to leave my ratchet gear on 6, but now I am going to lower my stitch length to 1. And I'm going to mark this on the fabric 1.0. And you're going to notice what a big difference this makes. Now, my foot is up. You may want to use a stiletto or something to help you get that fabric so that it is underneath where your needle will start. Make sure to double check that your foot is lowered because it is really easy. Um, to mistake that it is lower when it is up. And now I'm going to show you what a difference making that stitch length difference makes. And all I'm doing is guiding my fabric. You really want to let the machine and the foot do the majority of the work. And you're already seeing such a big difference. So here we are at a stitch length of 1.0 in comparison to 2.4. Look at that big difference. And I am going to start to put these on the table so that later we'll take a look. 
And now I am going to go to a stitch length that I like to use, and that is 1.8. And again, I am with the fabric in the folds. So I'm doing my quarter inch seam allowance, and I'm just advancing that fabric. And now I am going to be using that stitch length of 1.8. So that stitch length is making all the difference in the way my gathers look. The ruffler was introduced well over 80 years ago. And 80 years ago, it was very important to have that ratchet gear because the machines were not as sophisticated as they are right now. So the only way to make that difference was by using that ratchet gear. But now we're able to make many more adjustments. So here's at 1.8. And I'm going to leave that aside. We're going to take a look at that. Now I had mentioned that by the curve on the right hand side of the foot will give you a one inch seam allowance. So let me show you what that does. I happen to like this when I'm doing home deck sewing. So again, I need to get my fabric completely underneath. And I'm going to feed that in. And now you will see that I have a much bigger seam allowance. Maybe that edge was done with a rolled hem and I am leaving this completely finished for a curtain. So here I have about a one inch seam allowance at the top and look at those pretty pleats, so nice and uniform. Now I told you that I was gonna be showing you some different things that we can do with this because although these gathers and pleats are really nice and I've shown you how to make them look different, by simply adjusting that seam allowance, I do wanna show you some different things that we can do with the foot. And I am going to go to this satin fabric. And this is a strip of satin fabric that I have folded over. And I am going to gather this up. I am moving my, my stitch length to 2.0, just because I can. Isn't that a wonderful answer? I am putting both of my fabrics underneath that tongue. And sometimes that's easier said than done, especially when I'm at a bad angle because I want you to be able to see what it is I'm doing. So you will see I have both the layers that are underneath that tongue. And that is the pleating plate. So now as I do this, I am going to pleat both the layers. And this is a great way to give a finished edge without needing to hem it. Now, if you notice, I'm holding my fabric slightly at an angle so that it feeds into my ultimate ruffler and stays in that quarter inch alignment for my seam allowance. And what I'm going to do with this pretty pink satin is I am going to roll it up and make a rosette. So for those of you who do garment sewing or home deck, 
the rosettes are a nice touch to be able to add to your project. And I have, look at how beautiful that is. Now for my rosette, I'm just going to fold over in the middle and I'm just going to roll and I'm doing that really tight and look at what a beautiful rosebud I am making. And on that opposite side with a hand sewing needle, I would go through that to hold it together. But how beautiful that would look attached to a dress, a pillow, a headband. So that is making a rolled rosette. One of my favorite things that I like to do with the Ultimate Ruffler is to do accordion twist pleat trim. That's a mouthful. I'm going to say that one more time. Accordion pleat twist trim. I think that's right. So here I have a six inch piece of organza and I got this in the wedding aisle of my crafting store. So it came pre-cut. And what I am going to do is I am going to place this into my ultimate ruffler. And this is thin, so it's hard to tell when it's in the right spot, but I want to make sure it's going underneath that tongue. And I am going to go down to a 1.5 stitch length because I want tight, tight gathers on this. And I am going to sew my one side. Now I speed it up a little bit. You want to go with a piece that's comfortable for you. And again, you do not want to pull or tug on your fabric as it's feeding through. And you'll notice the faster I go, the louder it gets. And I know my sister, whenever I use this, she says I have the machine gun out. And I'm going to do all of one side. Perfect. Now, when I go to do the other side, I am going to turn my fabric around and I'm going to pleat in the opposite direction. And again, I'm feeding that fabric through. I'm going to lower my foot. When you're doing this for the first time, I do not recommend going narrower than six inches. It is really difficult to control when this gets too narrow. You are going to be amazed at how pretty this looks. And when you go to buy this already done, how expensive it can be. Now I've used this on garments, on quilts, on home deck. And it is a beautiful finish. Now I'm leaving a little bit undone so that you could see this. And watch, it's like magic. When you pull on this and neaten it up, it forms an accordion pleat and look at right there and I don't know I'm gonna try and show that but this is dimensional so when this gets added let's say a border wasn't quite the right color that you were looking for by adding that sheer fabric and the way it twists that can change the appearance the texture in a quilt how about down the lapel of a jacket? Um, in the Vogue Pattern magazine, 
in the January, December 2010 issue, for those of you who have that older issue, I did a over the shoulder wrap using this technique. So you may want to go to that magazine article, but this is just a beautiful, beautiful trim accent to be able to do. The last function that I am going to show is I am going to place a piece underneath the foot. You'll notice it's not attached to anything. It is completely not in my foot. And I am going to place a piece that is going to be gathered. So I am just going to advance that fabric. Now this can be a little bit tricky to do because you have two pieces of fabric that are moving at different speeds and in different directions. So I will tell you that this can be a little tricky. Now I'm lowering my foot and what will happen is that bottom layer will stay flat and the top will gather up. So you will notice that fabric underneath is barely moving, but my top piece of fabric gathered up. And what you have in one step is perfect pleats, a beautiful gather on a straight piece of fabric. So right there, I have my beautiful new skirt. I have my cafe curtains, my ruffle on a pillow, so many different uses for the foot. We're going to take a look at everything that I was able to accomplish and I'm going to lay that all out for you. So here is my flat fabric with the ruffle attached and now I'm going to bring in here are my pleats done at a stitch length of 1.0. And I am going to show you right next to it with a length of 1.8. This is 2.5. I am sorry, 2.0 and 2.4. So you'll notice just with my stitch length adjustment how different the appearance of those pleats can be. And let's not forget that beautiful twisted accordion trim. How beautiful is that? I am so glad that you were able to take some time to spend with me to go over the Janome Ultimate Ruffler. Again, I wanted to thank you for joining me and going over the Ultimate Ruffler. I hope that you enjoy this foot as much as I enjoy using it. I wanted to give you another look at some of the things you're able to create with it like the rosette and that accordion pleat and all the different varieties of gathers that you can create with the foot. I hope you enjoyed this and come back soon. Bye-bye.